Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome again to Saturday Sangha on February 17th, 2024 from Sadhu Bhavan in Poland. And it's one o'clock in the afternoon where I am. And here we are <clears throat> for an exciting two hours of Krishna Kata, Hari Kata, as seems to be the preferred term in in the land of our, um, let's say, God cousins of various Godiyamats, Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur apparently used and spoke of Hari Kata. Uh, somehow, in his Khan, we speak more of Krishna Kata. Um, Hari is a more generic name, you could say, of the Lord, in any case. Oh, my Jnana Timanandasya, Jnananjana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Tadati Svahadantikam Vandeyaham Shri Guru Shri Yutta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rakunatang Vitang Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitangscha Nama O Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinami Namaste Sadasvate Devi Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatari Vacha Kapatrubhyascha Pripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namami Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare uh, I'm just looking at interpretation. We have Spanish, Manibanda. I guess you're 
translating Espanol, yes. Good. Uh, this time we won't have um, Russian translations. Somya Karani is in transit. Um, I don't know about Polish. And I don't see any German translation. Hmm. What to do? Uh, my apologies for lack of translations for those of you who would like to have it. Hmm. Maybe we need to make some more planning in advance so we have translators. Um, oh, Darya Chandrika, would that be something that we should think about? Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. That's really a wonderful idea. Definitely we will take a look uh, who needs translation, even Croatia, maybe uh, German. Yeah. Uh, yeah, last time was Yamuna Mataji, but today no one sent me a message that they, they can translate, but yeah, we can take care of this as well. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay, so we have a song from... Srila Narottam Das Thakur, as we've been having uh, over the last several months. And, um, and we have something new this time by the arrangement of, uh, I believe it's Deva Shiradika who kindly made this uh, for us. She made a, a full... Um, word for word translation of this song, and she gave us a, uh, a nice little lesson in Bengali. I think that's been sh shared uh, with all of you. Am, am I right or am I wrong? Yes, Guru Maharaj, it was shared in the WhatsApp group. Okay, so you all have that. Um, yes, yeah, so you may want to look at that. And I think. We can go straight into today's song uh, rather than reviewing last week's song so that we can give some more time to uh, to this <clears throat> Bengali. Okay, so our song is... Hmm, from Narottam, it's another Pratana song. And I think it's, yes, Lalasa song number eight. And it starts, Hari Hari Kobe Heno Dasha Kobe Mor, Shevi Bo Donghar Pada Anande Vibor. When overwhelmed with bliss, will I directly serve the lotus feet of the divine couple? Oh, Lord Hari, Lord Hari, when will I attain this? So it's uh, continuing a theme that he's been expressing in so many of his songs. This Kobe question, when? When was that? When will that happen? Um, maybe what I'll do now is... Um, go rather quickly through these five verses and then we can look at them more closely and then we can sing the song and then we can uh, go to the grammar the bengali grammar lesson briefly Brahm, brahmara hoya shada rohibo chorane shri charanamrita shada when will I become a bumblebee, staying continually at the lotus feet of the divine couple and continually drinking the honey of their lotus feet? So Brahmara is a bumblebee and uh, Asvadane in tasting in relishing, koriboa svadane. 
Uh, then the third verse, E Asha Kori Ami Joto Shoki Gana Toma de Kripai Hoi Banchita Purna. This is my desire to join the company of the Gopi, Gopi friends of the divine couple. Oh, my master, by your mercy only. And my desire be fulfilled. Mm, so the key word there is asha, hope, and shaki gana. Gana is uh, assembly or multitude. So the all of the sakis, saki gana, and vanchita purana. Purana is. Uh, a stretched out form of Purna, pur Purna Om Purna Madaha Purna Mida. So Purna means full, and uh, Vanchita Purna Purna, my desire uh, shall be fulfilled. Bahodin Vancha Kori Purna Jate Hoi. Shabe mili do ya koroho ya shodoi. For many days, Bahudin, I have desired in this way. Please be merciful to me and fulfill my request. Hmm. Uh, we can look at the word for word in a minute. Seva ashe narutam kande dibo nishi kripa kori koromare anugata dashi Yearning and hoping in this way, Narutam Das weeps day and night. Please be merciful to me and make me your follower and gopi maid servant. Mm. So Kande is crying. Diva Nishi. Diva is day. Nishi is in the night. Kripa uh, Kori Koro. Be merciful to me. Um, and make me uh, an Anugata Dasi, a, a servant Dasi who is Anugata, who is who is a follower, one who uh, attends, attends to the, the divine couple. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, we have these mm, word for word explanations I, I don't know if we need to go through everything, but uh, there was another song before which had this word, the Shah, uh, which is not the same as Daasa or whatever. Daasa, of course, means servant. can also mean slave, but the Shah means a position or a state or a condition. Mm hmm so the prayer is um the shah hobe mor when will i attain this state or this condition she bibo don har pada anande bibor uh and we have this future tense for seva becomes or i First person, first and future, sevi bo, I will serve. And it's it's a it's a kind of how to say definite definite expression. It's not maybe I will serve or I hope I will serve, but I will serve sevi bo. <clears throat> Don't har. Uh, 
which translates as there. And uh, I think it refers to of the two, of Radha and Krishna. Donharpada, Anande Vibhor, and Vibhor, Vibhara. Uh, great, with great Ananda. I, I, I'm guessing it comes from the Sanskrit vibhu. Vibhu uh, can mean great, powerful. And then verse 2, Brahmara hoya shada rahibo. Rahibo charane. So again, we have a future tense verb, rahibo. Um, Rahimo means I will remain. Where will I remain? I will remain at the feet. Uh, in what mood? Like a Brahmara. Brahma, Brahmara Hoya Sada. Which might uh, give us a reminder of the famous incident in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto of uh, Srimati Radharani encountering a Brahmara uh, as Uddhava is looking on and she speaks to the bumblebee and that those ten verses are called the Brahmara Gita. Uh, that's to be found in, let's see if I get it right, uh, chapter 47 of the tenth canto, more or less. Uh, verse 3, Asha Kuriyami Jato Shakigan. So Jata is a word. And in the transcription, this could be a little confusing. Um, the, it's transcribed J-O-T-O. -O. And that's... Um, because it would be pronounced with a kind of, I don't know what it's called, a, a dark, dark A sound, the A, uh, which is short, becomes O, but it's not O, so it's not Joto, <laughs> uh, it's Joto. So A, A, Sha, Kori, and that O in Kori is also actually a short A. E asha kori ami jota shoki gana shoki gana. So that asha, sorry, that um, jota means all. So all the saki gana. So this hope, e asha kori ami jota shoki gana. <clears throat> Tomada Kripai Panchita Puran, you um, by your mercy, Tomadir, uh, my desire will be fulfilled. And let's see number four, Bahudin Bancha Kori Purnak Jate Hoy. So that uh, Jate Hoy. Uh, means to be. Jate, well, hoi means to be. Jate, I think, sort of like comes to be or comes about. Shabe mili doya kuro vaya shadoi. Mili, she translates as please. Interesting, uh, because I thought it's something like meeting, but okay, shabe mili doya, shabe mili doya koro oya shadoi. Please be merciful to me and fulfill the request. Um, 
and Shadai, Shadai means always. So I, I'm guessing that this comes from the Sanskrit Sada, uh, which means always. Yada, Tata, Kada. The question word in Sanskrit, Kada, uh, can be answered indefinitely, Yada. So Yada, Yada, Hi Dharmasya. And it can be answered, Tada, then, uh, or Sada, or Kada Chit, sometimes. And the final verse, Seva Ashe, Naratam Kande Divi Diva Nishi Kripa Kori Koro More Anugatta Dashi. So that's all pretty straightforward. Service is desired. Narottam cries day and night. Imagine crying day and night with this <laughs> intensity of desire. <laughs> Seva means service. Asha, ashe, desired. Narottam kande, uh, divanishi, kripa kori korumare, anugata dashi. Mm. Anugata, she translates as surrendered or following. So, gata um, is from Sanskrit verbal root gum to go, and gata means the participle gata, gone, having gone, or just gone. And anu means uh, following, uh, going along, so it has a sense of surrendered. Okay, that's kind of the song. Now, I suppose we could sing the song, and then we can look a bit at the grammar, if you haven't already. Uh, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Guru Maharaj, will you uh, switch on the? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hari Hari Kabe Heno Dasha Habe Mo. Se vivo don hara pada anande vivo. Hari hari kabe heno dasa kabe mo. Se vivo don hara pada anande vivo. Brahmara hoya shoda. Rahi Bhajanane Shicharana Mrita Sada Kori Bho Aswadane Brahmara Hoya Sada Rahi Bhajanane Shicharana Mrita Sada Kori Bho Aswadane Ed Asha Kori ami jata shakti gan tomale kripai ho anchita puran e asha kori ami jata shakti gan tomale kripa ho anchita puran Bahudina mancha kori purna jate ho Shabe milli doya koro hoya shado Bahudina mancha kori purna jate ho Shabe milli doya koro hoya shado 
seva ase narathama khande dibba nishi kripa kori karamar anugat dasi seva ase narathama khande dibbi nishi kripa kori karamar anugata dasi Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Bo Hare Bo, Nitai Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Bo. Shiva Naratam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Now let's go back to this document. And sounds off. Ah, uh, yes. So um, after each of the verses explained, then she has a list of all the all the words in the song. So that could be a nice way to learn learn words in a list. And then she's given a a nice. Um, introduction a, a little lesson 
uh, in different forms of two verbs. Uh, one is the verb to be, and the other is the verb to serve. Now, if you were having a similar experience to me in school, in primary school, we got some of this <laughs> for English grammar. And, uh, yeah, it was, for most people, for most kids, a very uh, dry lesson. Nobody was very excited about it. I remember in, um, uh, which grade was it? We We had to learn to diagram sentences uh, to analyze sentences according to the different uh, grammatical elements. We had to make little charts with lines, clause, main clause, subordinate clause, adverb, adjectives, all of that. So hopefully none of you had a traumatic experience from learning grammar of your language in school. Anyway, here, here's a little bit of Bengali grammar. And it's very nice. She has also included uh, all the words in Bengali script, uh, nicely typed, which means while you're learning uh, everything, you could also be learning the script. And um, learning a script is not really so difficult as you might think it is. And I would say the reason, one reason it's not so difficult is because um, it's a completely phonetic uh, script. What you see is um, tells you how it's going to be pronounced. This is unlike uh, the... Chinese languages, Mandarin and um, and uh, what's it called? Uh, Cantonese, which is that's a whole another story. So anyway, here we have uh, the the verb to be. Uh, I am ami ashi. You are tumi asho. He, she, it, is, she, or o, or she. Um, and so it goes like that for plural. Amra, ashi, tomra, asho, tara, toro, ashe. Uh, or in past tense, ami chilam, to me chilam. Chile and she o chil. Mm. I think it could be chilo also. Uh, amra chilam tomra chile tara chilo. And then we have a future tense. Ami hobo tumi hobe she hobe. And amra hobo. Tomra hobish, tara hobe. So, actually, one only has to learn six words for the pronoun ami, tumi, she, or o, amra, tomra, tara. And then uh, there's. Hmm. There's the, what's to say, the ver the actual verb part, ashi, asho, etc. Uh, they, they're kind of similar. Um, I believe this would be called an irregular verb, and therefore the past tense, chilam, is quite different from ashi, and so on. Um, yeah. And then she's given for to serve. Um, she didn't give the infinitive for these verbs. Uh, seba, 
Um, that's a noun, seva. So I don't know what it would be in Bengali. Seva karna, I guess. Um, or that would be Hindi. So I serve ami seva kori. Okay, in this case, what's happening is, um, and this is, oh, that's for all of them. So it's done with, um, with, with the noun, seba, and then the verb, to do. So I do seba. Ami seba kori. To me, Sheba Koro, to me, uh, She, Sheba Kore, and so on. Past tense, Ami Sheba Korilam. So there's a similarity there. Before it was Ami Chilam, and here Ami Sheba Korilam. Hmm. Uh, yeah, she's giving um, the familiar second person. So to me uh, is the familiar second person. Otherwise, the formal, uh, what is it? Apnar, I think. Apnar. And then we get some sentences. Mora Hari Kobe Shebibo. When will I serve Lord Hari? <laughs> Dina Dina Amrita Anande Rahibo. Day by day I will remain in the bliss of nectar. <laughs> and uh, I hope for the feet of the gopi friends. So here, this ending, er, shaki ganer, indicates that it's possessive. So the, uh, for the feet, or at the feet, of the gopi gana. Mm -hmm. Now these, I'm um, she's not with us to ask. I wanted to ask um, Deva Shiradika because it's a little surprising to me. Hariro Kripai Purnahoya Amar Asha, because that's also possessive. Harir. And I would have thought one doesn't pronounce the short A at the end. Harir Kripai, Hariro Kripai, maybe. Hariro, Hariro Kripai Purnahoy Amar Asha. So Amar Asha, my hope. <clears throat> what is my hope? That the Kripa of Hari will become, uh, or now will become, will be fulfilled. Shabe Harir Sheba Koro. Shabe. Everyone serve Lord Harir. Okay, and in this case, uh, we have a... Uh, hmm an imperative, koro, so do seva, sabe harir, harir seva, do the seva of harir, O oh, everyone. I think another way that would be expressed is shobai. Shobai and then korun would be a more uh, respect, respect form. The, uh, yeah. Okay, then, Shadai, 
Koro Harir Seba. Always perform the service of Lord Hari. Mm -hmm. And Kande Dine Ratri Harir Kripa Chai. Mm. I long for. Uh, this is Chai. I long for uh, Lord Hari's mercy day and night. Yeah, so that's nice. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's see now. Does anyone have any question about, <laughs> um, about this? Was this interesting for you to have a little Bengali grammar lesson? Yes, Guru Maharaj. If I can say, uh, Guru Maharaj, because Kavichandra Prabhu uh, did uh, very much something about this document, and mm. he is in a Polish channel, he's translating, and he wants to share to all of us something, but mm. because maybe we are not in English channel, he cannot do this. So I'm inviting you, if you can go to the English channel, and maybe he will be able to share what he wants to share. So Kavichandra Prabhu, can, can you try it now? Okay, yes, we can hear you. Okay, but everyone is hearing me, Guru Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So, I apologize. Uh, I tried to connect with two computers, but I uh, finally I found a third computer, and it was after the beginning of, of uh, your reading of this document. But uh, I have to admit that this document was created by me and artificial oh. intelligence. Oh, yeah, yeah. I exactly. thought it was Deva she read it. No, I was talking with her twice, and uh, because she's so busy these days, yeah. she wasn't able to analyze this document. But she says that the translation in general is okay, but the, uh, the only issue. So shortly speaking, because she wasn't able to make full review, that uh, those um, uh, those things in appendix, especially uh, analysis of to be and some other verbs. Mm. I mean, is is this conjugation or declination? Uh, declination, right? Yeah. Then, uh, then it's most probably contemporary. Uh, contemporary Bengali, not Sadubasha, and uh -huh. therefore, therefore you could uh, you could see strange things there, and uh, so this is experiment. Uh, this this idea of using artificial in intelligence was uh, was from Avadutaraya Prabhu. Uh -huh. He showed me different kind of uh, links to different uh, bots. Uh, mm -hmm. And this one in particular, in particular, is working really nicely. But uh -huh. as as you know, uh, in artificial intelligence, works nicely when you make nice prompts. So you have to to know what kind of prompts. Yeah, you to have give. to know how to ask what you. Yes, want. yes, exactly. So because I have there's some experience. A, wait, yeah. before you continue, there's some devotees saying that we cannot hear. Um, I think we have to tell them something so if you're on this channel and you're saying uh yes guru maharaj we cannot hear you now because you you went out from the english channel probably <laughs> that's because i'm telling those okay to, the english channel, <laughs> to go to the english channel <laughs> okay. um, they need to choose interpretation first interpretation and yeah. when they choose interpretation there are many channels like spanish um, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, English. So I hope they figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. now, yes, I put a different things. I just had some ideas uh, what we could <laughs> what we could put to this document, and of course, uh, grammar and analysis of the song. It's it's something obvious, but other things I think you can say what would be nice. Uh, for me, I have one idea that 
we could make a vocabulary with uh, flashcards, uh, put that somewhere in some flashcard system, online system, where you can learn uh, Sadubasha uh, uh, different words mm -hmm. by uh, by learning the most popular that are mostly used in in poetry of Vaishnava acharyas, huh. and that that's that's the way people are learning now languages. Yeah. You start from words that are most popular, you know, because <laughs> if you if you go this way, then yeah. you will be able, you know, knowing only 300 words, you will be able to to understand like 80 or 90% of the uh, of the text, mm -hmm. because other words are quite uh, rare. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so because the, the 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 first goal would be to just to learn uh, Sadhu Basha to to be able to read and understand what we are reading without, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, interpretation or, or translation. Mm -hmm. That that will be the first goal, <laughs> and maybe the only for some people because that would be nice. But if someone likes to uh, write poetry in Bengali, <laughs> or someone likes to uh, mm -hmm. speak Bengali with uh, with nowadays uh, Bengali people, then that's fine we could extend this but uh, the first first step or a major step would be to to oh my god okay. okay so we have still issues yeah that's uh, uh yeah to translate is always situation when we are like in uh, i'm feeling like in a box because like I cannot uh, speak to all people, and usually nobody is on English channel, and this is the only I, I have access to. Um, so, so what do you think about this idea? And maybe you have some other ideas what we could use, or how we could uh, format this. And Devashri Radhika is, is really uh, ready to help us, but you know I asked her two days ago, so there was no time for her. Uh, this week but mm -hmm. otherwise she's she, she's ready to, to help us with that maybe we can find someone else who, who can help in other, other ways as well but that would be a small project for devotees uh, we could do uh, like uh, you know we can start here by different props and errors learning how we could do this better and then, if the course will mature, will be more mature, then we can <clears throat> share it with other devotees in the world. That would be great if we if we can uh, do this. Okay, that's very nice. So, um, all all good wishes for developing that. <laughs> that's certainly good uh, to have Bengali especially sadhu bhats available for devotees. Uh, I think um, I'm going to go back to the normal okay. channel because many are saying this is not working, they cannot hear. So, but thank you for that. Okay. So I'm sorry that um, I don't know why it was not possible for some of you or most of you, or all of you to switch to English under interpretation. Um, but uh, I was just, uh, Kavi Chandra was explaining how he actually produced this document for us with the help of AI. And uh, he wants to pursue this further and develop it in ways that would be useful for for us, for devotees. So that's very nice. Uh, Dira Lalita, did you want to comment? Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Gautam. Uh, I, I only wanted to ask a question. Is it, uh, is it uh, okay to learn the alphabet, I mean the script? From the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the back of the of the book. 
Yes, that's and uh, that's actually the that's how I learned it. I I first learned Devanagari script from the back of Prabhupada's books. Um, and the way you the way you practice is very simple. You take any verse in a in a any one of Prabhupada's books, which includes uh, the Devanagari in that case, and you you cover the transliteration with you know a piece mm -hmm. of paper or your finger, your hand, whatever, and you try to go through it as best you can. And then you can just check. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And in that way, you gradually learn. What you get in that chart in the back of Prabhupada's books are the um, the basic um, the, the basic aksharas, the basic letters, uh, and um, that's pretty much all you get. The thing is, you then have to learn combination letters, um, and those are generally quite straightforward because generally they'll just sort of stick two letters together and sort of cut out the middle part or something. But some of the letters are not like that. Some of them, they make a different um, kind of adjustment. And you also get uh, the basic letters with the different um, vowels. So um, the default vowel for every letter is the short A, so ka. Uh, but then there's uh, there's ki and there's um, there's ka ka ke ki ku ku, <laughs> but kre and kri. No, that's just re and re. Uh, and there's K and there's Kai and there's Kao and there's Ko. Uh, so all of those are provided in the back of the book. But the combination letters, those you kind of get from uh, from reading in the verses, and you just can gradually see how they're how they're uh, connected. So it takes a little, you know, patience, a little practice. Um, it, it's kind of, you can make it sort of a game for yourself. And then uh, gradually, gradually, you start to become familiar. Um, of course, uh, these languages are not dependent on these scripts. Um the Sanskrit language is written in all sorts of different scripts in India. And I think I've mentioned before, uh, the Goswamis of Vrindavan were writing Sanskrit with, with Bengali script because for them it was easier. It was um, easier for them, I guess, and it was what they were accustomed to. So they wrote in Bengali. In South India, there will be Sanskrit written in Telugu script, in Tamil script, although Tamil is problematic, um, but I won't go into why. They don't quite have all the letters one needs, <laughs> so it's kind of strange, Tamil. Um, but anyway, the point is, Therefore, the point is that uh, if Sanskrit is written in Roman script with diacritic marks, but it needs the diacritic marks to get all of the sounds, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to read something which is in Devanagari only, you know, then you need to be able to read Devanagari. That's all. Or with the case of Bengali, if you want to read something that's in Bengali script, then you'll need to be able to read yeah, 
the script. And my point is, it's not so difficult to learn. <laughs> it's kind of step one to learning uh, the language. Generally, what um, begins by learning the script, just like I suppose uh, learning Russian, you have to learn Cyrillic script, right? And so on, or <laughs> Serbian. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. This is very mm -hmm. inspiring. Okay. Right. So, uh, Narutam Das Thakur Kijai, I think it will be nice to at least read one or two paragraphs more of our Narutam Das Thakur life. Uh, we were reading about Lokanath Das Goswami, the guru of uh, Narutam Das, and uh, we may come back to him when they finally meet. And then we re read, I think we just read one or two <laughs> paragraphs. Um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has declared that Narutam Das is going to carry uh, the Sankirtan movement in the future. But he hasn't appeared yet, so how is this going to work? This is Nityananda Prabhu's question. And uh, Mahaprabhu smiles and he says, Tomorrow I will enter the Padmavati River and deposit my love for Narutam to receive in the future. Yeah, we, uh, we saw that and we wondered about the geography, where is... Lord, Chait Lord Chaitanya, when he says this. So then all the devotees are hearing this and thinking and saying, who is, who is this Narutam? Uh, Nityananda Prabhu knew who was Narutam, even though he hasn't appeared yet, but he's not saying anything. Okay, next morning. The kirtan party moves along the footpaths, along the, um, well, it seems now they're at the Padmavati River, usually called the Padma River as far as I know. Um, or they came to the Padma River. Then Nityananda Prabhu turns to the devotees and he stops them, he stops the kirtan. And he says, now, watch carefully. Uh, something quite amazing is going to happen. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to place his divine love into the Padmavati River. Uh, sometime in the future, this love, which he's depositing, uh, is going to be given to the devotee named Naratan. So the devotees are standing there. They're all watching. You can imagine the scene. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, wades into the water and he gradually wades to the center of the river. Apparently it's quite shallow there. I don't remember, I must say, um, when we visited, but he wades in. And what happens? The river uh, begins to swell up. It comes, <laughs> the river gets excited, joyful. Uh, it seems to dance joyfully, swirling around and gurgling. Gur gurgling is uh, it's a sound like you make with your throat. Within moments, the river overflowed with ecstasy, spilling over its banks and gushing onto the land. So the river gets totally, totally excited. Uh, 
Well, what happens now? Suddenly, an extraordinarily beautiful woman rises from the waves. And she stands before Mahaprabhu with folded palms. Her garments, silk garments, are shimmering in the breeze. Uh, my Lord, how can I serve you? She asks. Oh, goddess of this river. Okay, so this is Padmavati herself. I want to leave my transcendental property in your care. Please take my love and keep it with you until a devotee named Narottam bathes here. At that time, deliver this love to him. Hmm. And of course, she agrees. <clears throat> but then she has a question. How will I recognize Narottam? So he says, when a young, dark-complexioned boy who is filled with love for God enters your water. <laughs> so it seems he's already... Narottam is already qualified. He's already feeling love for God. When he enters your waters, causing them to surge and flood, just like today, then you'll know that's Narottam. And then she has another doubt. If this boy has so much devotion that his touch will cause me to overflow with ecstasy, even before he receives your divine treasure, what will be his condition after receiving your love? That's a reasonable question. This is going to be perhaps too much ecstasy. And then Mahaprabhu replies, do not worry. Narottam will sustain my love. When he comes, simply give my love to him. So basically he says, don't worry. Uh, Narottam will, he will manage. And then quivering with joy, shaking, shaking with joy, Padmavati Devi received Mahaprabhu's love. Then she offered her obeisances and disappeared into the receding waters. So, that's quite a scene. All the devotees were seeing this. <laughs> their mouths were, their jaws were dropping. Ah, oh, how is this? Eyes wide with astonishment. Mahaprabhu just turns toward them uh, and he says calmly, begin kirtan. So, yes, everything is being arranged for Narottam. Okay. Narottam das Thakur ki jai. Today, as I remember reading on the calendar, is the Tirobhava Titi of Madhva Charya. Madhva Charya is one of our great acharyas who appeared in the, uh, what is it, 13th to 14th centuries in South India, uh, who established uh, the deity of uh, Udupi Krishna, very interesting deity I've visited uh, two or three times years ago. And yes, that was um, what I thought to share in relation to Madhvacharya is that one time I was with uh, my, my good friends, 
Suhotra Swami, the late Suhotra Swami, and with uh, Bhakti Vai Bhava Swami. We were touring South India and we came to Udupi uh, and we were in a, a guest house and the next morning I took a japa walk and I was just kind of strolling about um, in the area near the uh, the temple and I met a young man I don't remember how somehow I was speaking with a, a young man who spoke English and somehow in the course of the conversation he mentioned that uh, a certain scholar was was present was in town uh, and it was someone who I had heard of and maybe I'd also read something from him a very famous scholar of Madhva philosophy and theology B. N. K. Sharma he's kind of the the, the late B. N. K. Sharma now but uh, he was the authority on everything about uh, Madhvacharya's philosophy and theology. And uh, he just mentioned, oh, he's right, he's in town, he's in this uh, guest house over here. And uh, yes, you could go and visit him. And I thought, well, that's quite amazing, why not? So I went back to Suhotra Swami and Bhakti Bhai Bhav Swami and I told them, guess who's in town? The N.K. Sharma. And uh, um, Suhotra Swami knew who that was and he said, really, let's go. And because they had been, I was tagging along with them through South India, they were, they were, they had a big film camera and they were filming different temples uh, they wanted to put together um, a lot of footage for something and so um, they said let's take our camera and uh, we can interview him <laughs> maybe he'll agree to be interviewed so we went and we knocked on his door and uh, he opened and um we introduced ourselves and explained what we're doing, and we asked humbly if he would agree uh, to be interviewed. And he said, sure, come on in. So, <laughs> so we came in and we sat and arranged uh, with the camera. And uh, I have to say, the devotees... Uh, had lots of good intentions with this uh, in terms of the technology of the filming. They actually had no idea. <laughs> they, as it turned out, the, the film, all the film they made was underexposed. They were using uh, film. They weren't using digital camera. Uh, but that's a bit ahead of the story. Um, so Hotra Swami actually had read some Madhva philosophy and he, he knew things. And so he could ask intelligent questions to this very learned scholar. And, uh, and Professor Sharma was very pleased and he would answer. And I remember um, the big issue you could say with Madhva philosophy is they have a couple of what for us are rather strange ideas. Um, there's a kind of notion of what might be called predestination. Predestination is the idea that uh, you have a certain destiny and um, there's absolutely nothing you can do to change that. And specifically, if you are destined, uh, you may go back to Godhead, but if you're destined, you will never, to not go, then you will never go. And he identifies 
Madhva identifies three um, categories, three types of souls. Uh, and some of those souls are uh, souls that are condemned to eternally exist in the material world. So, uh, so Suhodra Swami asked him about this. Can you can you explain this? Uh, and the professor was very happy to explain. All I remember from what his explanation is that he, he was quoting one Sanskrit verse after another after another uh, in you know, great, uh, like the wind, uh, explaining. For him, it was all very clear. <laughs> and for us, it was like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> but as I said, unfortunately, because someone's going to ask, so do you have that recording? And the answer is, unfortunately, not. And why not? Well, uh, because all of the filming that they did was not properly done. And when that, um, when it came out that it was all underexposed, when, when we were back in Germany, uh, I think none of us were thinking enough that, well, at least we should keep this uh, recording because it it has the audio we can you know preserve that audio anyway that that was a little interesting adventure i had in relation to madhvacharya shila madhvacharya ki jai uh, I thought we should also be aware if we're not aware yet, but I'm sure you're all aware uh, that uh, the appearance day, the Avirbhav, the Triodashi of uh, Nityananda Prabhu is coming up. Which day is it? Thursday? Yeah. Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday here in Europe. Okay. Um, we're going to be having observance in Varshava Temple, Warsaw Temple, uh, next Sunday, I believe. Uh, so, yes, just to um, be aware. Oh, and for that purpose, or in relation to Narottam, uh, in relation to Nityananda Prabhu, it occurred to me that, let's see, yes, we could look at one or two verses of the Nityananda Ashtakam of Vrindavandas Thakur. <clears throat> um, and for that, we could... I suppose we could share the screen one moment. Yes. Okay. Now, there's a very nice recording of this. I don't know who is uh, chanting, singing, but uh, it's very sweetly done. And it's done, it's interesting, it's been done with, uh, with an electric guitar, but in a very tasteful way. And I'll just, uh, I hope you'll be able to hear this. Um... I wonder if I need to change to music mode. Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, before you, sh you click the share, there is a window which says share sound. So oh. maybe maybe you can stop share now uh -huh. and do it again, share. And before you will click share, click the, the window which it asks you 
let me see what's uh, so it says like share the sound oh i see yes okay good um then whoops what happened um do you see it yes we can see oh okay all right let's see now yeah and it goes on like that um it's uh it's an ashtakam and uh i like that recording it's excellent sanskrit pronunciation <laughs> So the translation of the first verse, I eternally worship Lord Nityananda, the root of the tree of devotional service. He appears like the autumn moon, very splendid and free of any taint. Maddened with pure love for Lord Hari, he walks as gracefully as an elephant, and his eyes constantly roll about. He is the absolute truth. His face is smiling, and he disperses the influence of the age of Kali with the staff in his hand. So kind of describing the uh, appearance the physical appearance of Nityananda Prabhu, walking like an elephant, like the autumn moon, uh, and his eyes are rolling about, and he is smiling. And he holds a staff, and with that staff, he takes away the influence of the age of Kali. And the second verse, I eternally worship Lord Nityananda, the root of the tree of devotional service. He is the abode of the mellows of devotional service. No one can be compared to him. And he is the be-all and end-all for his devotees. He is the Lord of Janava and Vasudha, who consider Lord Nityananda more dear than life because he is always maddened with pure love of Godhead. The unintelligent non-devotees cannot understand that he is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. Yeah, so that's, I think, very very sweet. I won't go through the whole uh, 
Ashtakam. You can find it uh, on the internet quite easily, uh, just searching Nityananda Ashtakam. And that can be a nice way to remember Nityananda Prabhu as he prepares to appear this week. Sri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Chai. <laughs> now, uh, the next thing I had on my list, this is coming up not this week, but uh, in March, is going to be the 150th anniversary of the appearance of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So there are going to be lots of celebrations of that event, I'm sure. And that's happening, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the celebration is on the 8th of March, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Something to put on your calendar. And uh, one other thing, I wanted to, sh I have a little show and tell here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, one moment. Go here. Desktop. Yes, okay. Then that away and that away and this down. Um, okay. Oops. Okay. What happened? Um, that's not that. Oh, something. Oh, I see. Okay, are you able to see this now? The Vrindavan Center? Yes, Guru Maharaj, we can see. Okay. I thought this is uh, something you may be interested to be aware of. Uh, the Vrindavan Center. It's a project that is led by one devotee named Ramdas, who I don't know if he's now based in California. He was in Hawaii. Um, he is he's a business man. He's um, and I think he's been fairly quite successful in business. One aspect of his business he does. Um, as a publisher, and so he has been publishing uh, books in what he calls Mandala Publishing, yeah, based in California. And about 20 years ago, he purchased... Um, let's see. He purchased this building at Keshigat. Uh, I don't know if you can see my pointer. We can see, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, okay. Yes. So this building <clears throat> was uh, built in the 18th century. And about 20 years, right next to it is another similar. And uh, over the last 20 years, he's been gradually getting all of the legal paperwork uh, to secure his ownership of this building. And in the last, I guess it's been a couple of years, he's been renovating this building. And what he's doing is He's making this into a museum uh, and cultural center. This is the 
inside courtyards. Uh, it says, this center will offer visitors an introduction to Vrindavan's temples, deities, founders, and devotional literature by featuring an interactive museum of visual and audio exhibits, cultural festivals, and seminars. The center will also bring awareness to the present ecological challenges and environmental initiatives throughout the area. So uh, Ramdas is working with the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies and with uh, what's called, I think, the Yamuna Network. And he has uh, several people involved. Uh, the building is called the Pandavali Kunj. Um, and he has a website, and there's more explanation there. Um, but this is just to show some of the renovation that he's done. You can see here a before and after on the left, before renovation. And on the right, the same after renovation. So you can see it's major work has been done. Uh, this is from the outside and like this, it's um, quite uh, detailed work, slow work, uh, but he's transforming it into a uh, what's going to be a wonderful facility uh, like no other in Vrindavan. It's going to, I think, fulfill a very important need in Vrindavan to have such a place. Uh, of course, there are all of the temples, but there are no, none of the temples have anything like uh, facility for, you know, showing the history of Rinda, the culture. He explains, through partnerships with scholars, artists, institutions, and NGOs, the Rindavan Center will facilitate authentic educational and cultural experiences that grant an introduction as well as academic access to the extensive traditions of the greater Raj area. And he calls it a, an extension of the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies and home of the Yamuna Network. It will serve as a space for the cultivation of art research events and environmental awareness. He's also purchased some land very close to this uh, within the courtyard of another old temple, quite large area where he plans to build a guest house, which will be specifically for visiting scholars to come and do their research. This is uh, the view from the roof of the building and the Yamuna River. And this he's showing, this is not at this place, but it's an example from some other museum of this sort of uh, displays that he wants to have in this, uh, in this place. And here are the floor plans. This is the basement, the ground floor, lots of small rooms. And uh, first floor. Uh, I believe this was originally built by uh, a queen or a princess uh, from a local kingdom. That's explained on the website. and what the costs have been. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. This is uh, very close to, I don't know exactly where this is, but it's close to the um, what we've just seen. Lala Babu Mandir, and within the compound of this um, temple, there is a, a large area for possible for building this guest facility. This is the temple. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Chandrama and Lalita Saki Kijai. So that's the temple. And then here in this courtyard, oops, uh, there's going to be a place for construction. Yeah, this, I, as I understand, this is the land where it will be possible to build something. Right, so that's the Vrindavan Center, and if you're interested, curious about it, you can uh, go to this website, vrindavancenter.org, and read more about it. Yeah, something happens in Vrindavan. <laughs> All right. What else? Oh, it's already uh, getting later. Oh, I was going to show, I'm doing lots of show and tell. Uh, this is one of the publications of Ramdas in, in Mandala Publishing. It's, uh, it's a student uh, book, a study guide on the Yoga Sutras for a course in the Yoga Sutras by Nicola Sutton, one scholar who works with the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. And that course is one of many online courses uh, offered by the, the OCHS. So they're now publishing uh, the study guides for these courses. Um, oh. <laughs> right. Anyone have something you want to share briefly? Any news? Oh, maybe I can ask. I hope it won't be an embarrassing question, Bhaktin Tia. Have you been able to get started on listening to our recordings? Yes, Marge, I have. Okay, good. Have you um, noted some points where some visuals could be added? I have. So I have an outline, um, and I've watched all the recordings. Um, oh, now I'm just okay. at the point where I need to go and find the images. So Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the challenge. Exactly. The easy part's done, Marge. Yes, good. All right, good. Thank you. All right, I think then it's time to go to Chaitanya Charitamrita. And for that, oh, let me move that out of the way and go here and go here. And then go back here, and then go here. All right. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. So we got this very brief description by Krishna Das Kaviraj of. Uh, little Nimai's mischievous discussion with his mother um, in which he, uh, he 
allows his mother to teach him um, non-Mayavad philosophy, anti-Mayavad philosophy, using the uh, example of the difference between earth and pots. Earth is uh, different from pots. When pots are made, then you can put something in them. You can carry it. You can use it. Um, earth, if you pour water on the earth, it just soaks up the earth. It's not going to be any use for you. Okay, Adi Lila, chapter 14, verse 36. E motte nana chole, Aishvarja dekai, Balja bhava prokotiya, Paschat lukai. Thus, under various excuses, the Lord exhibited his opulences as much as possible in his childhood. And later, after exhibiting such opulences, he hid himself. Interesting, it says balya bhava. So in the bhava, in the mood uh, of a child, prakatiya, having manifested paschat lukaya. After that, then he would hide uh, that opulence. And now we get another specific incident. Atiti viprer anna kaila kaila teen bar pache gupte se vipre korila nistar. On one occasion, the Lord ate the food of a Brahmana guest three times and later in confidence. The Lord delivered that Brahman from material engagement. So this is the story of the Brahman and his um, Shalagram Shila worship, uh, which, as Krishnadas is doing, he's just summarizing, so he's not telling the, the the whole story, which is there in the Chaitanya Bhagavata. How this Brahmana is preparing his. Boga offering to his Shalagram Shila deity when little Nimai comes in and spoils the offering, not once, not twice, um, but three times. And on the third time, he reveals himself to be uh, the Lord himself. Mm. Prabhupada's explaining that in the Purport. Chore laya gela prabuke bahire paya Tarash kande chari aila Tare bhulaya. In his childhood, the Lord was taken away by two thieves outside his home. Chore laya. The Lord, however, got up on the shoulders of the thieves. And while they were thinking they were safely carrying the child to rob his ornaments, the Lord misled them, and thus, instead of going to their own home, the thieves came back to the home of Jagannath Mishra. <laughs> so that's a kind of expanded explanation of the verse. Tarashkande <laughs> chadiya. Rising up on their uh, their shoulders, skanda. So in this way, Lord uh, Little Nimai got a free ride and uh, had some fun. Ayla tare bulaya. He misled them. Bul bulaya. Ayla coming back. He came back. And Prabhupada tells that story. So there's a good deal of humor in Nimai 
in his childhood pastimes. He's having fun. Bhadi chale jagadisha hiranya shadone Vishnu nai vedya kaila ekadashi dine. Pretending to be sick, the Lord asks some food from the house of Hiranya and Jagadisha on the Akadashi day. Vyadhi Chole. So this is also explained, these two devotees, Jagadisha and Hiranya, uh, regular prasadam is offered to Lord Vishnu on a kadashi. Some devotees have wondered about this. Um, should we offer regular prasadam? And here the answer is yes. Even though it's a kadashi, you just offer. Uh, rice and chapatis and whatever, but then you don't eat it. Uh, you save it until the next day. Uh, so Naratam, not Naratam, why did I say Naratam? <laughs> Nimai <laughs> is uh, kind of having some more fun here. He's playing sick. Oh, I'm so sick. I need I need to eat some grains. Oh, we don't, don't have any grains uh, in the house because it's a kadashi. Oh, well, uh, Dad, just go to the house of Jagadish and Hiranya. I know that they have. And so he does. And they were surprised. They wondered, how is it this little boy knows? Um, and it says it wasn't just regular prasadam, it was special prasadam being offered to Lord Vishnu. So that's interesting. It seems Ekadashi is a day for offering. Um, first, he says, first Prabhupada says regular prasadam, and then he says special prasadam. So it's regular in the sense that it will include grains. That's my understanding. Special in the sense that uh, there may be more preparations offered. Um, and this is what devotees would do, um, how they would, cooks would serve Srila Prabhupada. They didn't serve him grains, but they would always serve him quite a large meal on Akadashi days. Uh, they would offer more different preparations for Prabhupada on Ekadashi. Shishu shabala ye pada padashira gare chari kari drabba kai mare bala kere. As usual for small children, he learned to play. And with his playmates, he went to the houses of neighboring friends, stealing their edibles and eating them. Sometimes the children fought among themselves. Uh-oh. Churikari, stealing. <laughs> Dravya Kai. Pada Padashir, neighboring Gare. Pada 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 Padashir. Interesting. Now, um, oh, doesn't work. Let's see. I'm going to block the transliteration from myself because I'm out of practice with Bengali. Shishu Shabha Shachi Stane Koila Nivedan Shuni Shachi Putre Kichu Dila Ulahan Ulahan 
All the children lodged complaints with Sachimata about the Lord's fighting with them and stealing from the neighbors' houses. Therefore, sometimes she used to chastise or rebuke her son. <clears throat> Olahana, to rebuke, to scold. Shuni shachi putre kichu dila, olahana. Kichu, uh, this is a very common word in Bengali. Kichu or kichui uh, means a little, uh, some, and a sort of indefinite, indefinite small amount is kichu. Kene uh kene churi koro kene mah um marahashi shure kene pare gore jaha kibana hi gore Sachimata said, Why do you steal others' things? Why do you beat the other children? And why do you go inside others' houses? What do you not have in your own house? It seems that uh, little Nimai was a quite mischievous child. And uh, normally one might think this is not a good thing. But, of course, we understand uh, this as Leela and therefore as praiseworthy and uh, a source of uh, joy for the devotees to hear. Uh, the word kene is the question why. Uh, keno churikar, why do you, why do you steal? Kene maraha, why do you beat other children? <clears throat> kene paragare jaha, kibanahi gare. <clears throat> Uh, what is not in your own house? Okay, this could be... Uh, let's look at Prabhupada's purport. According to Vedanta Sutra, Janmadhyasya Yataha, since creation, maintenance, and annihilation exist in the Supreme Absolute, whatever we find within this material world is already in the spiritual world. So he says he's not, it's not really that he's stealing and fighting. <clears throat> he's doing this, but not as a thief or as an enemy. He's doing it as a friend in a loving condition. <laughs> And he says, he's not doing this out of any need, but out of natural instinct. <laughs> and then he says, this is something that children tend to do. It's, it's not unusual uh, for children to do this. So where does this come from? It comes from the Lord himself. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Just now I'm remembering I have um, a meeting now. And so I'm going to have to... Um, wait, is that... Yes, that's today. So, yeah. I'm going to have to end now. because I have another meeting in 10 minutes <laughs> and I need to take a little break. 
So on that note, I will say thank you all very much. And uh, hope you have a wonderful week. And chant and be happy. And keep sane. And uh, we see you again very soon. Next week should be possible. We can have again. So we'll see you then. Srila Prabhupada ki jai ananta koti vashravinda ki jai Hari 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 Hari